<laughs> See ni bull lawyer. That hide won't and won't hide for I've been a section one thirty seven D sub section one thing. Won't and won't hide the tiny book case put. <laughs> like this, uh, they don't forget the case. I'll be the case, don't do one thing. This boy don't expose now. <laughs> Let this boy for cop. <laughs> Every day, that's so, that's so good. The rest people, where they finish, they cannot say, yeah. This boy need to join. This boy need to join Peter will be lawyers. <laughs> Which kind of boy be this? I beg you know this boy, make it, make it tell me when send your account number. I need to give the boy, so I need to spray this boy. <laughs> oh, the boy of Tinibu lawyers, he explain everything, A to Z, and the Tinibu case not take close, and US not take close. Oh boy, this boy, oh man, oh man, are you Ibo? The boy speak of Ibo. A bon bon leke, o simi leke buke. God, I will protect this boy for us. My God, the boy don't have to be lawyer. Obedience. I don't know if he talk too much. I want to balance what this boy don't come again. <laughs> now if I expose the drug matter, now he don't come again against the bull lawyers so that they won't defend. Say the case don't pass ten years, so everybody don't forget that the boy break carriage ground. This boy himself is law. <laughs> A liar. Oh, you're gonna share the video, maybe what they see. I'm watch the video to the end. Oh, Baba, a party cry for you, Baba T. This boy was supposed everything. Oh, my God, my daddy, my daddy. So, Tinubu's lawyers are now trying to hide behind subsection 1E of section 137 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to say that Tinubu's. U.S. drug case has a statute of limitation of 10 years. But this is simply not true. Because a look at subsection 1E of section 137 reveals that that particular subsection is related to cases that were handled by the Code of Conduct Tribunal, matters relating to the Code of Conduct Bureau, matters and cases handled by the Code of Conduct Tribunal, where public officers if found guilty are restricted from holding any public office within a space of 10 years this case this u.s case this drugs case that is linked and connected to tinubu is not a case that was handled by the code of conduct tribunal it was a case that was handled in a u.s court far away in the united states of america so subsection 1e does not apply to it subsection 1e for the for emphasis only applies to cases that were handled by the code of conduct tribunal and public office holders who are found guilty of falsely declaring their assets or going against the code of conduct nigeria's code of conduct those public officers are given a ban of 10 years that stops them from holding public of offices for a space of 10 years that does not apply to subsection 1e of section 137 which actually talks about sentence of fine or imprisonment for fraud or dishonesty related offenses so stop hiding behind section 1e subsection 1e of section 137 please it does not apply now for those saying that the u.s consular actually cleared tinobu it's not true this case against Tinobu was conducted by an IRS agent, Special Agent Kevin Moss. It was handled by an IRS agent who collaborated with the DEA, Drugs Enforcement Agency, and the Federal Bureau of Investigation. So the lead files, the case files are with the IRS. The case files are with the IRS. If there were to be any arrest, it would have been handled by the IRS. So the FBI cannot have the case files of the DEA in their database. They cannot. And secondly, the FBI would only have the records of Tinubu in their NCIC if Tinubu had been arrested. And don't forget that the letter that Tafa Balogun wrote asked to clarify if Bola Ahmed Tinubu has a warrant of arrest 
It's clearly stated there. A warrant of arrest. Warrant of arrest or criminal arrest record. Tinubu was not arrested. And there was no warrant of arrest that was issued on his behalf. The case was dispensed of by a plea bargain. So a warrant of arrest would not have been issued and a criminal arrest could not have been conducted. So if a criminal arrest was not conducted and a warrant of arrest was not issued, how will that information be in the FBI's NCIC database? It won't be. So the questions that Tafar Balogun asked was wrong. In fact, what Tafar Balogun needed to do was go to the court and ask for a certified true copy and he would have had all the information he needed. So that letter from the U.S. Embassy, Embassy of the United States of America in Lagos, did not clear Tinubu of any wrongdoing. What is paramount or what is of more importance is the certified true copy of the court proceedings and the orders that were issued, the seizure warrants, the, the, the forfeiture warrants, the forfeiture order. Those were the important things and those have certified true copies. And so that actually overrides anything that the FBI would have said about Tinubu, particularly when the police actually asked the wrong questions. So Tinubu is guilty of being in possession of monies that represented proceeds of narcotics trafficking. And he was fined 460,000 US dollars, which makes him guilty of a sentence of fine. And therefore, by section 137, subsection 1D, does not qualify to, to run for office of president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. All you supporters of Tinubu should stop trying to deceive Nigerians. There's no correlation, no relationship, no correlation between subsection 1E that you're trying to hide behind and subsection 1D of section 137. The case was not handled at the Code of Conduct Tribunal. So section 1, subsection 1E does not apply. The case was handled in a court. So subsection 1D applies, right? Stop trying to deceive Nigerians. That's all that you're trying to do in your re re your response to the petitions at the Pepsi, the Presidential Election Petitions Court. Stop it. Nigerians know better. We're not as dumb as you think.